Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. As I sit on my shiny throne, surrounded by my shiny things, in my shiny and rather silly attire, I'm the Archmage of the entire freaking universe, after all. Mighty Quest for Epic Loot. I said I'd come back to this when I knew more about it and I'd had more experience in the game, but as it turns out, I like sunk many days of my life into it for no apparent reason, just because I really felt like it. I don't know what it was. There's something very, very compelling about doing these very short dungeon runs and then building up your own dungeon, looking at replays to find out where the weaknesses in your dungeon are, redesigning it in such a way that it could nefariously slaughter any of the horrible, horrible heroes that would head in your general direction. That's pretty damn compelling. A nice mixture of social gaming, Diablo, and Dungeon Keeper. However, in the first video, I did express some concern as to the pay-to-win nature of the game, and I didn't really come to a conclusion at that point, because I was in two minds. I wasn't really sure. I didn't know enough. However, thankfully, the kind guys over at Ubisoft have very much decided to make it a lot easier for me to determine whether or not the damn game is paid to win by releasing so-called Update 15. This is the recent patch to the game, which has done a lot of very good things and some very bad things. A lot of the good things include the increase of graphical fidelity. You can see the icons down the bottom there are much, much higher quality. If I were to go to the options menu, it actually has one now. You can even customize your frame rate, things like that. Always very nice. Still haven't got separate volume sliders, but hey, we'll get to that. It was good, yeah? And they did a lot of other stuff as well, like they nerfed certain creatures that were OP, they buffed certain other things, and the biggest change, which I think was one of the best, is that they made a serious effort to reduce the grind. And how they did that was to reduce the cost of upgrading your mines by 90%. 90%. Huge amount. Huge amount. So as a direct result, upgrading these mines is a hell of a lot cheaper. This is a very, very good thing, because it means that on a daily basis, you can generate significantly more of the two currencies in the game, that being life force and gold. Not only that, but they increased the life force drop rate significantly, like they doubled it on dungeon runs, which means that it's much, much easier to acquire a large amount of life force. Life force is used to upgrade very important buildings, like that one, the research lab, and the summoning portal, which are used to actually upgrade your creatures and summon new ones, as well as place new traps in your dungeon to prevent heroes from stealing all your stuff. Very good. However, there is something beneath the surface, beneath all of this positivity, that has unfortunately, in my opinion, taken the game from being maybe it's kind of pay-to-win-ish to this is very clearly pay-to-win now. Let me show you what it is. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a, a visit to the summoning portal, I think. That sounds like a good idea. So, if we look at the summoning portal right now, compared to the old one, firstly, you'll see it's a lot shinier. Very nice. They have increased the fidelity of all of the images here. They have significantly improved pretty much everything. Like, graphically, the, even the interface, they have polished it up nicely. Really, really good. You'll also notice these creatures are a hell of a lot cheaper now. The Snodder version 5, a tier 5 creature, level 18, being 5 life force to summon, incredibly cheap. Didn't used to be that way. What they did was they reduced the cost of all the upgraded creatures to the cost of the base level 1 creature, which means that regardless of what level they were, you would pay the same amount. This was very good because we were in this weird situation where you kind of had to buy all your creatures at level 1, keep them in reserve, but you had to place them down in order to pick them up again, which was so stupid. You couldn't put them directly into your inventory there. And then, then you would upgrade them. Because if you upgraded them, then tried to buy them, they'd be like 100 times more expensive. So this is good, yeah? So far, so good. What they did to compensate for this was increase the research cost of a lot of this stuff. Yeah? Smelly Warrior to upgrade to Tier 2, which is up to level 14, would be 2,800 life force. Quite expensive, quite expensive. However, here's the real problem. You might notice, if you watched my first video, that these elite creatures, like Dr. Skull, for instance, could also be bought with these, blings. These are the fun bucks of the game. These are the currency that you can acquire by paying real money. And previously, you could only buy elites with that, which was actually all right. It sounded OP, and it sounded like pay to win until you realized that filling your whole dungeon with elites was pretty stupid. Elites in general cost a lot of defense rating, so I can have like one of these or 10 of those. Eh? And if you just filled your dungeon with elites, usually you'd probably find that it was really bad. And it was also very easy to deal with. Like, if it's a lot of big single-target creatures, I just take a build that specializes in that, and I just destroy your dungeon. So it wasn't really overpowered, and it certainly wasn't pay-to-win. However, 
gradually getting to the point for dramatic effect. Let's say I wanted to buy Durr. Durr is 10,000 life force. Very expensive boss. It actually sucks now, by the way. I wouldn't buy him. But interestingly enough, I can click the buy button. That's weird, isn't it? Well, my castle's actually too full of creatures right now, so that's not really going to work out so well for me. But let's let's fix that. We'll maybe remove Mr. Firesley or something along those lines. There we go. We can clear that up. And then we should be able to buy him. Don't have enough life force? Buy with blings instead. This applies to everything. Everything. What do I mean by everything? Everything. Upgrades? You want to do an upgrade? All right. Let's research. Okay. Ooh, this counts not an upgrade. Sure is expensive. It's okay. You can get it with blings. You can buy it with real money. Oh, you want to upgrade your castle heart? Well, as it turns out, I can't do that because I need rank 7 gold storage. But that's okay because even though that cost 24,000 life force, upgrade with blings. It even builds it instantly for you. How wonderful. You don't even have to wait for the damn thing to build. Everything in this castle can now be bought with real money. This was not the case in the previous update. And that takes it from being a game that was like, mm, kind of all right, you know, it's at least they make obviously making an effort to not make it pay to win too. Holy crap, did they make this bloody thing pay to win across the board? The ability to buy everything, including upgrades, means you can rush ahead. I mean, you could essentially upgrade this castle to the highest possible levels just by paying real money because that's dependent on this castle heart right here, see? Yeah, you upgrade this and that will allow you to get new ranks of all of this stuff. So you buy that and then you upgrade this, you pay for that and you could just keep doing it. Like I could get to the point where my castle had everything I could ever possibly want in it and I'd just paid real money to do it. It would be ludicrously expensive, but I could do it. And the fact that I can do it is the problem. It's a pretty major problem, unfortunately. It boggles my mind why they decided to do that. It really does. I I don't get it. I, I don't get why they thought this was a good idea. They were horribly mistaken in that respect. I have to say horribly mistaken. Oh, man. So. Just going to pop down a Cyclops there. There we go. And we're going to put a couple of those in. There we go. Nice. <sighs> It's irritating because they actually took some steps in the right direction. Like the blacksmith, for instance. You used to be able to so-called craft equipment, and you could buy all of this with blings. You can still do it, by the way, if you don't have it. The weird thing is you can only do it if you don't have enough gold, which is kind of strange. I mean, you could keep your gold next to nothing and then just buy whatever you wanted if you so desire. Like, if I try and buy the Shining Star right now, it's going to buy it with gold and not with blings, which... It's super bizarre. A very, very strange way of doing things. Now you can't buy epic gear from this anymore. Yeah? So this gear is significantly nerfed in comparison to the stuff that I bought earlier, which is this stuff. Yeah? This is level 12. If I were to compare that to, say, the level 15 helmet, significantly worse. Yeah? So this epic gear was really, really good. It's now legendary. Funnily enough, this stuff... These two legendaries that I got as drops are now epics. I don't even I don't even want to know. That makes no sense to me. So this gear is a lot worse, which means that the idea of buying power on your character for actually attacking dungeons, they got rid of that. Except they then said, you know what, you can you can buy it for blings anyway, and you can buy everything else here for blings too. Like when I looked at the potion brewery, I thought, oh great, they've got rid of the ability to buy this for like 10 blings each, which was easily the best way of getting potions. Five potions for like nine cents. That was a bargain. And that kind of is something of a pay to win system because the more potions you have, the more likely you are to survive in a dungeon versus someone that doesn't have any potions. And some of these potions get quite pricey. You know, a stack of potions for 1,200 gold is less than it used to cost. Yeah, they nerfed the cost of that significantly, which is good. But even then, that's gold you could have been spending on other parts of your castle. And that's where it comes down to, isn't it? I, there are several types of free-to-play. There's the flat-out pay-to-win style, which is you can buy straight-up power. Yeah, I buy something which makes me 20% more powerful. It makes me hit 20% harder. Or I buy a gun in a game that no one else can get unless they pay money that shoots 20% faster. And it just it, it's not balanced, yeah? It's just better. And then there's the pay-to-skip style. Yeah. 
the idea that you will pay money to get boosts or you'll pay money just to skip a part of the content. Yeah? And this game took pay to skip and applied it to everything to the point where I think it's actually tipped it over the edge and taken it to a place where I would just flat out call it a pay to win system. And that's a huge disappointment to me. A massive, massive disappointment. And funnily enough, it's not the only problem the game actually has. Now, if we talk about the pay-to-win idea, it only applies to defending. Uh, it doesn't apply to attacking. Now, some would argue, oh, well, it's fine then. Mm -mm. No, it's not. It's not fine. Because at the end of the day, you can actually increase your ranking without having to attack a castle at all. The ranking system is called crowns. And you earn crowns through various means. You can earn them by attacking castles or by having people lose in your castle. Yeah, They will give crowns to you if they lose. And they'll also give you money if they die there as well. So that's always nice to have. So you could create the most badass castle and buy everything you need and upgrade everything to ludicrous levels to make that work. Not have to ever leave your castle at all. Not ever have to attack and just rank, rank up and just keep earning those rankings. That's an interesting bug. It's a weird place to put it. That's so silly. Incredibly silly. You know, the sad thing is that if they hadn't put that blink system in there, I'd have suddenly said, wow, they've made this game a lot better. They took away the ability to buy a bunch of this stuff. They nerfed the buyable gear. You know, what a, what a great move that was. Absolutely phenomenal idea because all this stuff was kind of OP anyway. I mean, this level 12 gear I find difficult to replace even at level 16. So unless I find something really good like the E-Velocity stuff, then... I'm going to be in a situation where I'm not going to replace this gear for ages. And I've said this time and again, not replacing gear in a game about loot is really bad. And if you do that, you're, you're just, you've designed a terrible video game. It's true, you have. I'm sorry. You have. If your game is about a mighty quest for epic loot and your loot is not epic and I could just buy better stuff on the marketplace, then it's not really a mighty quest for epic loot, is it? It's actually nothing of the sort. And that's where a lot of the enjoyment comes from. I like designing my dungeon. That's probably the most fun that I have in there. I like running other people's dungeons. I like the fact that a dungeon is different every time I go in. It's a great piece of player-created content. It's got some fantastic ideas in it and a lot of potential. But you're going to mess it up if you keep doing this whole pay-to-win nonsense and if you don't improve the looting experience. Like, the reason I was going into dungeons, especially the tougher ones, was because I wanted to earn money, right? And I want to earn money to upgrade my stuff. I don't have to do that anymore. So the incentive to go into dungeons is now only to upgrade my character's level, which thankfully you can't buy. Although at least, you know, you can get an experience upgrade. So at least you have to fight in order to do that. But upgrading a character's level is not really that important. I mean, you can upgrade your, ca your castle level independent of your character level. So it's not remotely important, really, whether or not my guy is level 16 or level bloody 6. I can still have creatures that are higher level than me. That's not a problem. That stuff's independent. So, what am I going in here for now? I'm going in here for loot, obviously, to upgrade my character. But the loot's boring! I, I, I th hoped it would get better. I, now that I've got to level 16, I was uh, only a couple of levels in my original video. Now I'm level 16. The loot's still boring. Uh, don't get me wrong, my loot is effective. I have some really good gear, but it's dull. All it does is like attack speed, health, mana, dodge, crit. It's super standard in every way. The most interesting effect that I found in items so far is life or mana steal. Really? That's the best that you could come up with? If you want a mighty quest for epic loot, not only should my character look absolutely badass, which to be fair, he kind of does. Those shoulder plates are actually hilarious. Oh, God. Oh, this pull. I think they've made they've made a very, very difficult pull here. <laughs> By the looks of it. But my gear doesn't do anything fun. It doesn't have those really cool effects like summon an evil dog, which will eat all of your opponents, or... Firing has a percentage chance to cause the floor to erupt in a cloud of angry bees. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, these guys, currently there's a balance issue in the game where the healing is so powerful that you basically can't out-DPS it, which is really stupid. <laughs> it's like, alright, I've almost got him, I've almost got him, I've almost got it. There we go, finally. I actually got him down this time. Anyway. You need more interesting items. You flat out do. Because if you're going to de-emphasize the notion of going to people's castles to get necessary money for upgrades, considering you can just buy it for real money, then people are going to be going in to upgrade their character. And if they don't give a damn about their character's upgrades, because your upgrades are so flat-out boring that they couldn't care less, like, oh, great, 
this epic item gives me plus 3% attack speed. This is truly incredible. You must learn from the state of Diablo 3 at launch. It was bad. It had some boring ass items. And it took some cues from Torchlight 2 that most assuredly didn't in order to actually become better. So I can manage to get lost completely in this castle and go the wrong way. Wasn't really paying too much attention. It was those damn healing pulls that did me in, so I've got to fail this. Anyway, whatever. I'll still get some decent life force and stuff from this anyway, as well as a piece of, piece of loot every once in a while. So that's the double-pronged problem that this game currently faces. They made the castle building part completely pay to win, even though they made, they made some positive changes. But all of those positive changes were taken away by the fact that he said, yeah, it should be absolutely fine if we have people pay for upgrades and everything. No, it's not fine. It was never that way initially, and now it is, which is super stupid. And then, when you go into these castles to actually fight, you get boring items. There was so much potential here. Thankfully, this game is still in beta, and I'm hoping they just decide that this was a stupid idea. It's like, you know what? You know what would be a, a better idea? If we just de-emphasized this whole pay-to-win thing, and we said, right, you know what? It's about going into castles that people design. You have to earn it. Yeah, you can get boosts to get it faster. And maybe you go back to the old system of being able to buy elites, because I, I still think that was actually fairly balanced. And it... God damn it. <laughs> Why am I standing close to him? That was stupid. You need to stand far further away from this guy now. Anyway... There we go. That's better. Just move back towards what it was in the first place. Keep some of the changes, like nerfing those items to make sure that the stuff you buy from the blacksmith isn't colossally imbalanced for its cost. And then say, all right, we want to monetize. We're going to do it with boosts and we're going to do it with cosmetics. Because this is the craziest thing. Such a missed opportunity up to this point. The best thing about this game is designing your castle. You know what's cool about designing castles? Blinging it out in a major way putting some awesome stuff in there. I want a statue of me in my castle I want that I want a gigantic angry badger I want to be able to reskin some of my enemies to look different and maybe put hats on them I want to be able to do that stuff. I want to be able to buy carpet I want to turn this into a cross between dungeon keeper and animal crossing and I want to intimidate my foes with all my ostentatious wealth because that's actually what the game's based on Huh? This whole opulencia idea, it's based on you are supposed to be the greediest, wealthiest, most showy person. And I don't have any way of expressing that. None. This is all default. All of these rooms, I can't decorate them in any way. I can't personalize them in any way. I can't buy coats of paint. I can't reskin my monsters. I can't put them in little waistcoats and top hats. That's microtransactions in a nutshell. Your game was built for this. And you haven't done it at all. I know it's still in beta. I get that. But this is completely the wrong direction. You know, I like this game a lot. I think it's a really nice combination of the social game with Dungeon Keeper and Diablo. I think it's got a ton of potential. The user-created content and castle idea is genius. It's, a, it's challenging. It's fun. It's got loads of interesting potential. And you just bloody torpedoed it. You don't even understand how to sell stuff in your game. You don't even understand what people would buy. I want to kit my castle out with cool stuff. That's a fair way to actually monetize the title. Boosts and cosmetics. Fine, let people buy elites or whatever. Let people rush buildings. I was okay with that, you know, that's fine. Okay, so I get my mind slightly quicker or I get this slightly quicker. Fine, that's fair. I'm all right with that. The ability to buy everything, you're out of your mind if you think that people are going to accept that. I don't want to play the game anymore until that's fixed. I don't. I it's nowhere near as fun. Not anymore. I just, I feel dirty for having bought these upgrades. I did them just for the sake of testing out the castle leveling system to see what level it would take it up to. My castle is now average level 17, but like most of my creatures are the highest level they could possibly be. And as a result, they are really tough to deal with. Uh, I have a very strong 215 defense castle that I think people are going to struggle on. But, you know, and that was satisfying, but I didn't earn it. And I certainly didn't feel like I did. Yeah. Uh, Buying creatures and buying upgrades and things like that is running dungeons to earn the money to upgrade your own dungeon is the core part of the game. And since they've just taken that out completely, it feels like two disparate elements that now just don't join together in any really meaningful way. And when it comes down to loot, I can't be asked. 
2% more crit strike? I'm sorry, but if it doesn't summon a gigantic swarm of angry bees from the ground on a 3% proc chance, that is not epic loot. It, can it be fixed? Yes. Were there a lot of good improvements to this patch? Yes. I hope they'll fix it before they bring it out. I'm not 100% confident that they will. I think if, if anyone has the mindset that it's okay to be able to now buy everything for real money, then they don't truly understand what you're supposed to be doing in a free-to-play game. And for God's sake, fix this interface lag. Ugh. Beta might be beta, but this is going in the wrong direction. Very much so. I really hope they just roll this back. I really do. I hope they change their minds. Oh, God damn it. It would be such a shame to see a really cool concept ruined by unnecessary greed and overzealous monetization. My name's been Total Biscuit. A mighty quest for epic loot. We'll see you next time.